Hey, what's the word, people? Welcome to Real Rap on the Road Presents. This episode, we're taking you to the heart of downtown Chatham to the legendary Francis Cocktail Lounge. What we got is an exclusive interview with owner-operator Marlon Mitchell. Happens to be the birthday roast of one Michi Hall, so we're giving you behind-the-scenes footage of that as well. Um, make sure you guys are checking the spot out, man. It's off the of 75th and Perary. Every Tuesday, we have open mic comedy night. Uh, I mean, you, you're liable to see anybody come there. The hottest working comics out there. Uh, we also upstairs doing an exclusive interview. We've seen the likes of Rev Fox, Bernie Mac, Kevin Hart, Mike Epps, and anybody you know on the Chicago comedy scene. So make sure you come out here to show some love every Tuesday for the exclusive open mic that goes out to all comics, man. And if you don't want to come for the jokes, stay for the drinks, man. Some of the heaviest pours in the city. So sit back, enjoy. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Love. Hey, we here back once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kids of all ages, with real rap on the road. Legendary right now. What we Not got kids here, of man. all ages. We, we no, 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 no. That 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 was too excessive. Kids okay. of eighteen or over ages. Oh, kids at heart. Okay, cool, kids, cool. kids at play, man. I, look, what no, I'm bringing I, to you no, right no, now. No, you I'm going to leave. I didn't, I didn't you like see this? That. I got three legends in the house right now. I got. Not even legends in really too, Chicago but. comedy. I'm talking about legends in comedy, period. I have Mike Simp. I got Michi Hall. Happy birthday, Michi Hall, by the way. Hey, happy birthday, Michi. Hey, happy yeah, birthday. Yeah, yeah. And I got the one and only because oh, we here at Francis. This is a love letter to Francis, by the way. And we here with the one and only Marlon Mitchell, man. Marlon, Melo. Marlon, Marlon. Francis' right. son. Heartbeat at Chatham, downtown Chatham downtown right there. Downtown Chatham, baby. The hey, mayor, so, they call him over here. So we happen to be here on Michi's birthday for Michi's roast. Like I said, we got legends in the house. But we're all going to do real quick, man, is to let the people that know, let the viewers know, Francis, man, could you give me a quick background on Francis, how this established, where we at in Chicago, what this means Chicago comedy? Uh, well, Francis Cocktail Lounge is a uh, basically a speakeasy, a tavern that has been here this year coming up. 2023 will be 57 years on the south side, downtown Chatham. Downtown! Which is Chattoo. 75th mm -hmm. Street, where Chatham, the Chatham area starts. One of the greatest neighborhoods in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. But not only that, Francis is my mother. And uh, as a comic, I've always wanted to have a comedy show here in France. I've done it all over the world, everywhere, every place, every walkway, anything you can think of. I never was able to do a comedy show at France's. So for three years straight, we've been having a free comedy show that has been spectacular mm -hmm. on the south side of Chicago. And uh, we bring some of the funniest cats mm -hmm in the world here and they enjoy themselves and they make the people laugh for free so they're really sharpening their skills because it's an open mic and it ain't just an open mic man it's a dog house the inside of francis ain't for play play man it's right, not pg-13 right, right and i appreciate you for knowing that and that is only going to make you better as a comic so mm -hmm. i'm glad it's established as a, as a rough room because a rough room when you get out of here, you are to a crowd that appreciates funny. You are funny. Because we get to Kentucky, Kentucky. and we had a one bedroom Airbnb. <laughs> like, nigga, who does this dumb ass shit to people? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, on some real shit. Now, I forgot about that. Yeah, I know you. I ain't let you, I ain't let you get it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of shit going on. We meet you the only nigga that had his own crib but was looking for somewhere to stay at. I ain't never seen no shit like that. I ain't never seen no shit like that before. But I'm like, nigga, man, you know you got somewhere to go. You got a home. You're like, man, I'm just gonna walk the streets till about 4 or 5 in the morning because my girl cheating on me. I'm gonna go sit outside and see if she got a nigga up there. She's like, me, let that bitch go to the bed.
Somebody else is supposed to drink. I can't get a whole motherfucker to drink. I know because I was standing in my little two mattresses in the front. Okay? Like, I was there more than he was. Like, you know what I'm saying? I plead my little part. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to clean up my little part. Pete never cleaned up his part. This, this is like a, a workout center. So you come and get in the gym. Though. Yeah, mm -hmm. you coming and you getting in the gym in here. Because... You got some funny people that go up before you. Then you got a, a seasoned host. You got Michi Hall that's been doing this for umpteen years. years. Well, let, let's say more than that, though. Uh, uh, when the pandemic happened, uh, me and Marlon are uh, good friends. We hang out. And just being vessels for good energy, people would call us when they were sad. So they would start coming to Francis or whatever. So we started the comedy night just because weddings were getting canceled. Uh, uh, people was having parties and stuff that they couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a tent out back, so we would start having people in the tent. Yeah. And uh, we just started a comedy show just off the idea that comedy heals and help people. Because uh, I think the week we started it, uh, we was at a family's house with somebody's front room. I think mine was family's front room. And we were just cracking jokes for the family. And from there on, we said people are hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, this pandemic got people depressed. And we got to keep the doors open. So this brother here, Marlon, talked to the alderman, talked to a couple people, made some calls, because you weren't allowed inside. Yeah. You weren't allowed to get together. But he knew that it was necessary for this neighborhood to have a place where they can go, get out the house, have a drink, have some laughs, and, and get some comedy. And what it did for me was brought the reason why we do comedy back to the forefront. Mm. Usually it's money, getting rich, getting famous. But what about healing and helping people? Yeah. What about... People that's depressed, they come to the crowd and say, hey, man, I was fucked up before I came here, but, man, I feel great now. Thank y'all. And, they, and they've been back every Tuesday. Yeah. We got a, a, a lady that come down there. She 80-something years old. She been coming every, since, every Tuesday. She been coming since the first Tuesday we had. We didn't know how she found out about it. Yeah. But she been every Tuesday. But she wandered up on it. Yeah, yeah. Call she Nana. stuck. Out drinking everybody, filling on booties and stuff yeah. every week. Yeah, and but I saw his grandma. Life. And talk about uh, uh, Southside Comics, a comedy uh, Comedians from Chicago cutting their teeth and getting funny ahead. We have Mike Samp, who I saw do the Crip Walk in front of Dub C at the legendary Jokes and Notes. He's been in the game. He's tearing it up right now. He's traveling all over, man. If you could, man, what? How long you been in the game? What brought you into comedy, man? Because you came up, you came up in some in some crazy parts of Chicago, no? Mm, yeah, uh, I, I've been doing comedy about fifteen years now. And um, what started me was I, I was always a character at, at jobs. I always was the one that stood out personality-wise. Mm. And then, like, you know, being around people, like in the hospitals I was working at, in the museum, met a couple of people that knew some people, that knew Marlon. And it, had, it, it just happened all crazy how, it all just, how we all met up in the parking lot down there. Uh, my man Marcus Combs, rest in peace, mm. took me under his wing and was, and was gone. Uh, met Michi when I first started doing comedy. He told me some uh, unencouraging but encouraging words. <laughs> Michi done but, put a lot of people on. But but I mean, mean you know, hell, right? <laughs> you know. But um, um, if yeah. I could ask, if I could ask you this, like Chicago ain't for play. The South Side of Chicago ain't for play. Some of the places we at right now, let alone the places y'all might have came up, been at, in, in growing up, being a comedian, and then having to do what you have to do to survive in these streets of Chicago. That almost seemed like, you know what I mean? Like hot and cold. Like yeah, I, I cap my gun on me when I be on stage all the time. <laughs> when was trying me, I, I be already like, y'all sit y'all ass down for let it up. No, really, it's really no problems with comedy clubs like that. Like not uh, even it, a comedy it, club. It, I'm just talking about in life in general. I mean, in life, yeah, well. in, in life, if you live life in a positive way, you positive things, you do things that you don't have them problems. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you because I'm like, you know who I used to fuck with? I was like, oh, she was like. Me too. I'm like, bitch, yeah, you nasty bitch, you dirty bitch, you know this nigga lick her ass and everything. No. I'm just bullshit. But well, see, it is. We yeah, want to do this not, before we move on. It's good to know that we serve the same God. Yeah. Mm. So within His mercy, He keeps us out of all hurt, harm, and danger. Mm. And you would think because we are the bottom of the pile that it would be a situation or a circumstance. Sometimes it does, but then some some type of way he works mysteriously and puts that out. I'd have mm. been in a situation. And we able to go home. 
Well, I, I'm driving on the expressway and no bull, no no lie. I'm driving on the expressway. A cop pull up on the side of my car on the side of, like as nobody else on the expressway. Mm. Me and this car, daylight, broad daylight. I'm going to the lab factory. Man, the cop pull up on the side of my car. Slow down. I'm waiting for the windows to roll down. Yeah, yeah. But I'm knowing somebody in there like, nah, nah, not him. He ain't on shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? That's probably that's dude off. The, I've been in that situation a couple of times. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With what that mean? internet to save me a couple of, like for real. So yeah, it's like that. But yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a troublemaker. Yeah. I don't go out start no shit with nobody. When somebody could be looking for me in in the streets and no shit, it just sometimes you be at the wrong place at the wrong time. It yeah. sounds goofy and cliche, but making people laugh that's that's one of the most powerful things. Dude, you got yeah. you don't you know. Do out there. Let me let me tell you something. I didn't have man. I'm sitting out west filming skits with D Brown, Uncle Hank. Now shout out D Brown, shout out Uncle Hank, shout out the whole West Side. Listen, man, the shorties west out there, side. the kid, like all them little shorties, pull up on that block just for them to just for them to laugh. Yeah, just for them to laugh. Cause if they ain't pull up on that block, ain't no telling what they did. Cause they ain't laugh right then and there. The so something day. changed. Mm -hmm. They man right there. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. seen it happen before. I'm talking about all of them got guns on their laps. Just pull up, just, hey, man, what y'all on? D Brown, and they all just get to laugh. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. yeah. Ha having an open bike here, we've had uh, street niggas of so, so many words that yeah. want to just try comedy. Like, where a guy got on stage and was just telling all this block uh, information. Mm. Oh, man, we shot a little on 35th and shot a little something. <laughs> and, like, we had to get him out of here. But his whole thing was he really didn't want to be out there like that. He really wished he had a way to do comedy. And, and mm. a lot, it's an open mic. So we give people a chance that want to follow their dreams. You get a lot of people that just always just wanted to try. Yeah. But it's more about uh, 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 just trying and doing something positive. And that's what we trying to do here. And not to make it seem like it's all doom and gloom on the South Side. If you're watching this, you're a comedian, and you want to actually earn all your comic badges, you want to pass this stage with three stars, you have to come to Francis. You have to, uh, you have to do this open mic. But let me ask y'all this. Some of the names, some of the people you started out with, some of the people you performed with, some of the people that you done mentor, talk to, came up with. What are some of these names? What is Chicago comedy from from y'all's perspective, from when you started to now? The things that you've seen, the people you've known. You you say names like, what well, like Bernie Mac? Yeah, Bernie like Robin Mac. Robin Harris. Come, Francis like Cocktail Lounge. come on, nah. And he drank Miller Jamin Draft beers. Well, even more current, all That's of cold, the, all of I would know comics. that. The, of this generation, now the names y'all know, the Deion Coles, the Lil Rails, the d -Rails, all of them be here at Francis Cocktail Lounge, yeah. chilling, having drinks, because it's a, it's a home for and Chicago regular, comedy. And regular, regular smegular when they walk in. Yeah, Rail been here several times just hanging out. Man, Rail taped this special and came back here the next day and chilled out all evening. Yeah. <laughs> now, you talking about Rail special? When you say it meets you, yeah, whooped his ass. <laughs> In the same property that he in now today. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. Real said that the Chicago Theater, and then he let the niggas get up and say, hey, I'll meet you. I'm gonna have to beat him up. Nothing. Terrible. Terrible. How do you feel when that nigga living your life? How do you feel? I killed him. It hurts a little bit. That's crazy. I would hate for a nigga to live my life and go on and tell the story. And then tell me, well, you can sit up front one of the shows or something, you know what I'm saying? That's fucked up. This is, you can sit up front. I'm gonna go. Um, I'll put that for real. I'll talk about all the shit in the world. This is my friend for real. Me, she called the one that started me in comedy. He was the first person to teach me how to write a joke, how to set shit up, about stage presence. He put me on so many stages with a lot of great people. He introduced me to a lot of great people. I don't think there's a better man. He's a comic comic. I don't think there's a better man in comedy than me, she called. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Dirty individual, like I love this. Kind of stuff. I love this silky funky ass, and this is my friend. And say I do, I do love this silky funky ass. This is my friend, for real. And I just hope, like in the future, going forward, I just wish you the best in everything that you do. I pray that all your shows, everything that you're trying to do, is successful beyond your wildest dreams. Because I'm tired of your shows failing. <laughs> On his show, yeah, I thought that was awesome. But I, I think all comments. My last good hangout with Dion was here uh, when he first started wearing mink coats out. <laughs> if you remember that, when he came yeah. with the big minks.
Man, and uh, man, uh man. yeah, yeah. So chinchilla, that was here. You got a chinchilla, though, yeah, man. that was here. So it's like, yeah, all yeah. the Chicago comics, Corey Holcomb, all them guys. They, yeah, you say Francis, they know exactly what you're talking about because they been here. This this brother here, man, uh, uh known as the man. room wrecker for since I've been doing comedy, and uh, uh he's very humble and cool. But keeping yeah. that together and keeping comedy together as long as it's been, it, I, I hope yeah, it's a dream. Here's the man. Go ahead, finish. finish, finish. Well, I really hope that. And he know this. I hope that it's a time where he can make this location an actual comedy club. I think that would be really good for Chicago, especially how Hyde Park and the demographics are changing. I think mm. that you can have a nice 100, 200-seater right here on 75th. I think that could happen. Yeah, that would be nice. I think for us. Little, yeah, that would be everything. Yeah. Why wouldn't it? There's so much good comedy energy yeah. here. Because we're bringing what we went out to achieve basically bringing it back home yeah you know i went out my first time going out was with uh tony schofield and, and right. kenny Howe. Yeah. and you know i've seen a lot of them, the muscle man of comedy be cold mm. yeah i've seen a bunch of them damon damon was the reason why we were able to be on bt when it was comic view yeah damon here all the that time that opened up a lot of doors and uh, I, I perform with a lot of them, man. Ricky Smiley, uh, cool. Pierre. Uh, Just Nisha had a night here. She was hosting. Yeah, she was hosting night Monday night. About two years. That's also. my little sister on Mondays. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Nisha. Uh, this is one of the, the dopest niggas in Chicago comedy. I will, I will give him that. But Nisha also is a drug addict, so you know, it's all good. Shout out to Nisha. 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 And it's not just crack. Michi will do any drug. I'm talking about acid, meth, <laughs> cocaine. He eat ass. Like, he don't give a fuck about life. And that's why. That's why he's still standing strong. Um, <laughs> but he's a functional hype. Like I said, don't know real crack is with flat. But this nigga. That's his uniform. That's his functional hype uniform. He got a... Every day, so when my best friend started coming around, she was like, ooh, tell me she's wearing them pants. I said, bitch, he will. This is only, this is, that's, his only, that's his only pants, little do you know. You think, he, he wears his best pants every day for the hoes that don't know, right? <laughs> then because of the pandemic, things changed. Then we went to Tuesday. We went to Tuesday because limbs, shout out to limbs, they're actually closed. So in respects to not uh, hogging the parking spaces in the lot, we would wait till they were closed mm -hmm. to actually do our night so the people that were coming out would have a place to park. So much love to Limbs for that. Uh, low key. Everything. And all the comics go to Limbs. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. oh, man. Nah. We we about we about to slide out now. All everybody that that lives in Chicago knows that it's everybody's here, but everybody's in their own place, right? right? And I see this this brother right here, uh, Sam. I mean, he he always been on the incline. Right now, it seemed like he he really hitting a, a decent uh, you know a nice stride. stride. Yeah. And I'm seeing you you on flies, and it looks like you changing. The, is that ever gonna change that dynamic of the south side, the south side, the west side, the west side? Everybody just stays in their own little pocket. Downtown, uptown. I, I don't comedy. believe. It. I, I go anywhere, any and every. Like I don't. I don't believe in no. Um, you could just stay southwest. I. I. I mean, I. I, I like the north side. Mm. Supposed to take over the whole you, you, city. There is I nowhere. Mean, it's I, nowhere I, I, that I wouldn't even say I'm not gonna go over there for. Mm. I gotta go see what's going on with. This you. is the third largest city in the United States of America. It's. 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 I don't understand why we don't have more comedy mm. rolling around. To, to, to those address, people to nervous to come issue. to Francis, what would you say to them? If they, well, if they, if they, if they just, if for the people that just want to stay in their pocket and they don't come down, they look at the Laugh Factory, don't understand Francis is on the same. In my eyes, Francis is on the same level. A Laugh Factory, same level of pick any stage in Chicago. Francis just as important to, to me. Well, to, to but that but issue. they don't know Francis. Like Marla said earlier, is a place where you gonna get better. It's gonna make you get Go better. For so you when you get to the laugh factory, you so gonna you gonna be burn ready. it down. You gonna be ready for it. Yeah. So this ain't nothing but a gauntlet to go to another whole little old thing, man. That you gonna be like, now you know what? That was uh, easy. I'm gonna have man, to keep going back. I gotta, I gotta go back. You gotta back. train in the gauntlet, man. Yeah. You gotta yeah. I wanna throw this in there because don't nobody know this. Uh, my mother and father were good friends with a guy. Uh, named Red Fox. Shout out, and Red just Fox. like we hanging out right now, I got all the footage 
I got all the pictures, all the memorabilia, where this guy used to be right here where we're at, chilling out, drinking, talking, mm. bringing people by here, supporting business, and then he'll go to Hollywood, and then you'll be, you know, because I've seen it, like, yeah, he was just in here. Oh, my God. And it's like, he, I mean, once he, like, went all the way, because it took him so long, but at the same time, he was always professional. He just never forgot where he came from. Yeah. So that skill set is something that we're, we're, we're growing to try to achieve. And you got a golden opportunity to hang out right at the same place that this dude hung out at. Different time, different space, but just keeping tradition going. So that's what I enjoy about it. The legendary Francis Cocktail Lounge and Bar. Rest in peace, Francis. Is a legendary spot. If you a comedian, if you even want to call yourself a comedian in the city of Chicago and you haven't done this spot, then just go ahead, jump off a bridge. To the left of me, I have Marlon Mitchell. To the right of me, I have Michi Hall. I have Mike Sam. Today, this week, I believe, is Michi's birthday week. And tonight is his roast. We're going to get that on camera. And I just want to double check. Like, you knew they were roasting you tonight, and that, that, was, your first, that was your first choice in pants? Actually, one of my lady friends picked these pants out for me. Fair enough. Asked me to wear them. I and they're, they're also pajama pants that she got at <laughs> Four Mon Mills. <laughs> Model. Yeah. Michi Hall is. Hey, hey. I, all I want to say is out of these guys, my pants were requested to be put on today. I don't know if y'all, <laughs> if any of y'all had that. Kurt Franklin requested them to put them on. <laughs> hey, nobody sauce. requested those pants. Yeah, I know. Nobody. Yeah, these, these, yeah. these are those pants. Those are like something you fix your car in, right? These there. the big dick edition pants. Right? <laughs> you couldn't get none of these, buddy. That's when you got a cock and you gotta use it for, use it for a belt. You know what I'm talking about? I wrap my dick around my waist. I use it for a belt in these pants. Yeah. It's not even gonna go down, man. We gonna them get you coochie the cutters food. you got on right there. <laughs> them. them culottes Daisy you got Dukes. on. <laughs> hey, gonna... Where you get Daisy Duke pants from, sir? And he got the little spot where you pop it open right there so you can change his diaper. <laughs> hey, we gonna get you the rest of this night. It is a real rap on the road. Love letter to Francis Cocktail Lounge. Make sure y'all stay tuned in. Keep checking it out, man. Real Rap Podcast. Francis is located, Peace. by the way, at 307 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, a.k.a. Downtown Chatham, right next to the fabulous Limbs Barbecue, plug to them, where the uh, Muslims eat their pork. <laughs> 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 they, they got a Just Turkey off. spot right up the way, though, too. So, yeah. I mean, you and can the get spot out where Mitch you got these pans on with anywhere over here? <laughs> yeah. They come with the large tip. You get a large tip and limbs. Them pants come with the large tip because it's a napkin, by the way. Picnics. How much is it going to cost with the tips? Uh, the pants is basically free. They make them in the back. Come out on, the go. tip skin. Okay, you ain't have to say that on an interview. All right. We at the fabulous Francis Cocktail. Line. Stop on through, man. Help us keep man, these lights on. Come on down, around. man. It's love. Love. Real Rap Podcast. Podcast. Podcast.